Let's see. The style is deliberate, so I'm actually going to be staring at the Rob the Robot poster you see right there. And uh, the reason I'm coming on is this channel is going to be more different. I still have hours and hours of footage to go through. I'm also battling dying hard drives everywhere I turn. But you know, they last eight years to a decade under, I don't know, ideal use, I guess. And um, then they start to die. So I, I lost hours of footage for both this channel and, a, and the um, other channel, Las Vegas Time Machine, that was recorded on a rebuilt by me two terabyte hard drive. Nothing other than um, I like bumped the hard drive and it lost its boot header, which was a uh, Apple partition map. And I can never get it back. But I did scan the drive recently. Um, it sounds like the Western Digital, which is the worst hard drive company ever. Um, I've only seen one complete Seagate failure, and I have another Seagate that's failing. That's it. With Western Digital, with the exception of one drive, no, two drives, all the other hard drives I've bought from them have failed. So which direction is this channel going? Well, other than doing what well, I'm going to be doing, long game footage of just one game, might be streamed on the PS4, or it might be, it might just be me recording myself playing it. And that's it. It, it can go two ways, and the views have just been too low to go one other way. I mean, I, I don't even get decent low views. My views are just low. I don't know why. If I was getting, well, what's, what's just what I don't understand was, um, before, um, I'm trying to remember when, but when I started, um, when I started uploading, which was in, uh, 2009, though I, I, like I said, um, I don't know if I've talked about this. I, I'm starting to remember the first videos I've watched on YouTube, um, and, uh, you know, it's funny that I can revisit all of those videos and see how low the resolution really was, how choppy the frame rate was, and stuff like that. And, um, prior to 2009, I tried to make an upload... But the um, WWE didn't want me to upload this particular footage. So, right off the bat, I went ahead and I, I took it off. It wasn't deleted. It was asked to be um, removed by the WWE via YouTube. So I went ahead and did that. But prior to that, I had had to have been on since... Um, I've had a specific YouTube account sometime between 2005 and 2007. And before I was asked to remove that particular WWE related clip, which actually had no wrestling or anything about it, it was more of the inner workings of the company. Um, I had already gotten, well, I don't know, just overnight, um, four or five thousand views. When I finally removed it because I had the email given to me later in the evening of the next day, um, it was at seven thousand views. And then I went ahead and removed it. After that, I worked on getting footage and the big problem here was um, living in Pahrump at the time, 
there wasn't any broadband internet available. Well, there was, but it had ridiculously stupid limits, which there should be no limits on any form of internet. It doesn't cost any more for me to transmit nothing to transmit something, regardless of size. It, I, I do understand bandwidth metering and usage and all that stuff, but in actual technological engineering, no. It, it actually makes no difference also in television if I'm transmitting a black screen, a white screen, or a screen with motion. It's being transmitted. It doesn't bog down the hardware. Well, the Internet's built on those same principles. Just go ahead and check out, um, wrong, wrong scientist. Hmm, I can't remember his name, but, um, see, uh, Robert X. Cringely's documentary, Nerds 2.0.1. Also, if you are watching Nerds 2.0.1, well, there's, under a different YouTube account, and then it was ripped after that. Yeah, that that's me. The, the one at Internet Archive, the one floating around on torrents and everything. That was me. It was never meant to be anything more than uploaded. And then it was going to be taken down when the series was supposed to be released um, on DVD. It never has been. But it's worth finding. And if you like the series, please try to buy the original tapes. I have. Um, and I've, I've told Bob Cringely as such that I, while I may have pirated his stuff beforehand, uh, those pirates are long gone because I've bought everything new. Or not new, um, I should say original, legitimate, which usually goes along with new, like uh, Triumph and the Nerds I bought new. And then um, I also recorded it off of the Science Channel because at the time I had no way to record from a DVD to a tape to show my mother the series and the show is paid for every time because my mom doesn't fast forward through the commercials so that's always paid for the commercials are still advertised that's how it's supposed to work that's how they want you to do on DVRs is they don't want you to fast forward through the commercials they want you to sit through it they being the eight Hollywood companies that control almost everything in the United States and um, moving on from there um, I didn't have any permission, I didn't have any blessings, um, but I do have acknowledgement. I went ahead and using a phone modem, I have to figure out what is a size I can have before I get disconnected. For whatever reason, when I wanted to use AOL dial-up, they didn't have an available prompt number. I couldn't afford paying long distance. I didn't have long distance on my local phone line. So I went ahead and went through uh, Yahoo. As strange as that sounds, I went through Yahoo. And I was able to uh, get pretty good at it to where I had it, despite its speed, I had the internet connection working like broadband. It was went into my router and uh, it broadcasted from there. It's the same wireless router I use today. So the first video I put up um, after this, I recorded it and edited it. I used to borrow this thing from my old employer called the Blue Box. And with the Blue Box, some footage I made was, um, I took Virtua Racing, and that's still up there, and then the Street Fighter II intro for the Genesis. This was all encoded at 320 by 240 at um, 15 frames a second at uh, 512 kbps in MPEG-4. And I, w I wish I kept... The, well, I probably do have the original iMovie files and footage in their pristine glory. The problem... Um, you can see that I have nearly three dozen, maybe four dozen dead multi-gigabyte hard drives. I don't mean, I don't mean two gigs. I mean 25, 120, 250, bigger. Most of them IDE, some laptop, 
And onto that was all kinds of footage. Um, Nintendo Wizard 22, a, a, a fellow YouTuber who I've, I've known for over a decade now, um, he, um, he actually bought uh, footage from me and used it himself for a while. He got slammed with uh, copyrights. Uh, not not by me, but someone claiming to be on my behalf. But I don't own the copyrights. These were Club Mario episodes, which you can see on a, a Club Mario channel. Kurt Weldon himself has seen these videos. Kurt Weldon played Doctor Know It All and was um, he was a um, I think I don't know if he's retired, but I believe he was a big wig or a good production manager at uh, uh, Saban entertainment you know the power rangers people so i've told you the codec it wasn't in h.264 these files had to come in they had to come in under 10 minutes and later under 15 minutes and that's um that's what they came in at real real small i had to upload it through a phone modem um the way i had to watch youtube through a phone modem was i would go to keepvid.com uh, and I would go ahead, throw the uh, URL in there, and then walk away. Everything with a phone modem was walk away. Um, I also have DVDs, VHS tapes, some beta tapes, VCDs, and just raw digital footage of me playing hours and hours of video games. Now, I'm not into playing with people, so or anything like that. I don't mind two-player or whatever, but uh, what I have currently was, um, I didn't know which way to go on the channel, so I did the FU Netcast. This was before the CU podcast from Pat Manny S. Punk. This was the FU Netcast, which Phil Barnes came up with this long name for the original podcast, and he called it The Truth is Stranger Than Fiction Show. Unfortunately, two movies called Stranger with Fiction both came out, and it was the one with Will Ferrell that nullified my application at the trademark office. So I just shortened it to the initials for a long time. It got to the point where to meet consistency, I was throwing on public domain movies in the RSS. My ratings on iTunes was consistently good. So with the move to YouTube, you know, I was going to use my YouTube channel exclusively for everything. That would have been great too, but it didn't turn out that way. I put on a public domain film, and it's slapped with copyright. But it's a public domain film. Well, whatever. And so I did the FU netcast for a while. I did phony football for a while. A phony football will be a, a super uh, super ball. I'm using that, a Super Bowl, that's S-O-O-P-E-R, Super Bowl tradition for my channel. My channel will stay Grumpy Bear Plays until I get a cease and desist uh, from American Greetings. But um, I give up. I, I have slapped some videos with multiple tags, and they... Rarely get more than a dozen views, two dozen views, if I'm lucky. Um, I've put up Street Fighter 4, Darkstalkers, Street Fighter 3, Mario Kart 8, and Super Smash Brothers footage. And very few of them get any views. The best performing video I've had from the restart of my channel, which the restart can be seen uh, when... In 2014, when I put up Grumpy Bear Plays, um, whatever, I'm just going to call it G. Parodius. And uh, I think out of all those views, I'm, I'm sure two-thirds of them is my wife. because She likes the game. It never translated in anything. Then I got contacted by TGN over my Mario Kart videos. I explained to them very carefully. Uh, but I'm under the impression, I don't care if they get angry at me for saying this, I think TGN is a bunch of viperous scumbags 
uh, because their views never translated by being an affiliate of their network. Um, beforehand, I didn't even mind having copyright claims where someone else got the revenue on a video because at least the video was still on my channel. Now I have to take it down and redo it and then put it back up. What a waste. What a waste of my time. And going that direction, it, it takes a lot of effort. It, it, you ask anybody, you ask anybody who's in video, to do um, a show daily, like like The Tonight Show or um, The Late Show or your evening news or anything, it, it takes a lot more effort than it seems. I, I've always wondered about that. When I worked in a television station and we had a news department, well, the news department is a bunch of people sitting around writing transcripts and it takes all day to get these written and polished and condensed and polished again and finally put these up and on the air at the same time they have to go look for footage they have to scrub through footage they have to scan footage they don't have the footage they have to go shoot the footage it's it's it is a lot of work um it, it goes for anything if you ever seen a documentary on how snl is done it's it's a lot of hard work. Now, I'm not endorsing anybody's political, religious, or lifestyle views by using these examples. I'm just saying I know how how it works in, in video production, being that pr video production is my background. But I don't have the financial wherewithal to go and get hardware like a Mac Pro with Final Cut Studio Pro or X or whatever it's called. I don't have that. I can't afford Sony Vegas. Um, I got a very, I got two very capable co Dell computers that can run Sony Vegas Pro. I can't afford Sony Vegas Pro. And I can't afford new computers um, outside of a Mac Mini. That's the honest truth. I can't um, the Dell I got lucky because a pawn shop was stupidly selling it at 150 or give us an offer. So I gave them an offer of 75 bucks. They took it. Charged me 80 actually, um, after something. Somehow it ended up at 80 exactly. I'm like, oh, whatever. And then um, the the Dell desktop I found, which is actually outdated. I I do believe that this computer is 11 to 12 years old. And um, but it was completely rebuilt top to bottom, upgraded its CPU, upgraded its RAM, upgraded its um, video card, everything. So it, it it even has a Bose sound system on there that I actually like to use, but I don't. Uh, I don't often because it, it drives the neighbors crazy. That's how loud this sound system is. Now with all that, what I was hoping was, I'm not expecting to get rich, um, but yeah, it would be nice to bring in uh, about $2,600 a month in either revenue, Patreon, or both, total, total, I'm not, even though on Patreon I put it up as the monthly goal, um, well, that's what really gets me, not, I've seen people donate to, uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to name names, because I'm not looking to make enemies, but I've seen people donate to the shittiest causes on Patreon. And um, I, I can't even muster a dollar a month from somebody. I don't know. So after all of this, uh, I, I, I want to take the bull by the balls and say, you know, no, this is the direction I'm going in. And that the fact that anything I do translates into no views, practically, or very minimal views. And while I am loyal to the viewers I get extremely loyal and I love you guys a lot but I've got to have more and without that more there is no more there's no more revenue here I I have maxed out my my uh, credit cards and I I have pawned everything I could pawn that is not essential to making footage 
uh, video game footage. So, you know, if I need money, I would love to take my PS4 in. It's two controllers. It's extra USB cable. That, that gets a few bucks more. And the um, two dozen games I own for it, I'd love to pawn it. I would, I would love to pawn it and use that money towards uh, keeping the lights on and everything. And in fact, all my bulbs are low-power LEDs. Um, things like the iPad, like the PS4. Uh, my Xbox 360S. Uh, my Mac Mini. All, all that stuff. The I, did I say the iPad? I, I don't know. Um, even my VCRs and stuff um, all go on the layaway at either Toys R Us or Sears or Kmart or Walmart when they do layaway in the last quarter of the year. And um, either my wife or family members or friends or, or I pawn something to make the payments. Like I said, I can't pawn anymore because it, it's impossible to pawn what has already been pawned. And I, I did all this because I was hoping that I, I could make a, a nice, decent living providing viewers on YouTube uh, video game footage that's quick and easy to watch. Well, I don't care anymore. I'll continue to put videos up and stuff, but... This is not, I'm not obligated to do a show uh, or anything anymore. If some money comes in, some money comes in. That's about it. I, I don't care anymore because the views aren't there. Like I said, I, I love the loyal viewers I got. Um, I, I, I don't want to give out a shout out yet, but they know who they are. They have stuck by me for for years, at least a year, and some years. Um, I will give a shout-out to um, Sega CD Universe slash Vampire Mike. He is... He's been my friend for over a decade online, and um, when he's got a question, I answer. When I got a question, he answers. When he has a personal thing that bothers him, he'll tell me. When I got a personal thing that bothers me, I tell him. We all give each other advice. Well, we're completely bluntly honest, and, um, you know, the other one I already mentioned, Nintendo Wizard 22. Uh, and it's, you know, outside of those two, um, everyone else has been mainly new people I've met over the last two and a half years. And I am, I am grateful, though, but... Without those views, this can't be my top priority. So, I'm not going to have videos in, in the caliber and quality of, say, Rob Dyke or James Rolfe or uh, Doug Walker because I don't, I don't have that money or resources. Uh, I understand many viewers have never lived in Las Vegas. So I'm going to explain about living in Las Vegas for just a moment here. Las Vegas is a town that will chew you up and spit you out without any regret on its part. I've never seen a town like that. Even Pahrump is not as mean. Las Vegas is the meanest city to live in in the United States. It does not care it runs on its own clock. Now, Las Vegas wasn't always like this. When the Mafia controlled the town, it never had these problems. This is all, since in the last 35 years, since the mob has been run out of town, and they have all these problems with the citizenry. People come in, they don't assimilate to Las Vegas culture. There is a culture out here. And Las Vegas is a town where you don't have to go to college to make it. But if you bring in an industry that's non-essential to the gambling industry, um, good luck. Good luck. Enjoy your temporary stay here. 
um, I've gone on the fringe part of uh, gambling, and that's gaming, video gaming. Not They want to call it the gaming industry. They always say gaming, because gambling was a taboo word in the 1930s. But it's not. It's It's gambling. And gaming is something else. Gaming is what we do on the Super Nintendo, on the PlayStation 4, on the Xbox One, uh, you know, on the Wii U, and on your computers, which that's not the purpose of a computer, but whatever. But that's what people do. They play video games. And that's gaming. This town is brutal. But, I'd rather not be anywhere else on the planet than Las Vegas. I can't live anywhere else. I did live in Pahrump for four and a half years. And what I learned is, what a waste. I don't know how anyone can live anywhere else on the planet. Now that I've established, from my perspective what it is, that what it is I would like to do then. I would like to get a job at the Circus Circus Arcade or the Excalibur Arcade. To do that I have to apply through MGM Grand, uh, excuse me, MGM Mirage, and uh, hopefully all I want to do, I, I just want to maintain the machines, and I, I hope I can do that I hope I can do that for for 40 years. Maybe a little bit longer. I want to retire at the age of 80. And in the meantime, I, I still wish to talk about video gaming and I wish to play video games. In America, it's seen that people give up certain things at a certain age, but I'm half Korean. Genetically, I can't give up things like gaming and comic books and anime. These are three things that I've grown up with. These are three things I'll grow old with. And having visited the Far East and of their respective communities in the United States, I have seen, as a child, I have seen grown Korean and Japanese businessmen and respectable women go and play games like Tetris and Super Mario Brothers for hours on end at a local arcade. I have seen these same people walk around reading manga uh, or even American comics or, or magazines and newspapers. There's no reason for this cultural divide. Well, I feel that I've made my point. I've given you some history and some background. If you wish to help out, if you wish to debate, if you wish to whatever, you want to insult me, that's fine too. You want to compliment me, that, that that's insulting. No, I'm just kidding. If you want to compliment me, that's fine as well. That's coffeeforbinky at gmail.com. That's C-O-F-F-E-E, -E, the number four, B-I-N-K-Y at gmail.com. I want you all to be good to each other out there. I'm going to go ahead and go, I'm going to go get me a job in an arcade, and I'll be around. That's all I can guarantee you, and that's all I uh, will guarantee. Oh, and these posters aren't for sale. I, I don't know. Why someone emailed me that. Somebody emailed me that. So, no, the posters aren't for sale. So y'all, y'all be good to each other. Okay? Okay.